Ready? Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> let's get the show on the road. Hi, sweet friend. Welcome to Watercolor Happy Hour. My name is Volta Voloshin Smith. I'm the artist behind Color Snack. And this is my husband, Dan Smith. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm the person, the husband behind Color Snack. But also the mixologist of the show. Oh, I'm also the mixologist <laughs> of the show. Uh, this is Watercolor Happy Hour, where Dan will show you how to create a cocktail, and I will show you how to paint it. Um, yeah, so today is a fun one. I had a lot of fun painting it, but it is also quite tasty and refreshing. So, yeah, I'll let Dan introduce it. Yeah, I'm going to talk in depth on this guy because there's yeah, kind of a fun story. I don't know. I guess this is a new trending cocktail. So the espresso martini is on the way out. The And the, uh, the dirty Shirley is on its way in. Honestly, I think it's just because the name, it's funny. It's a riff off of uh, Shirley Temple which is a very old mocktail, possibly even the original mocktail, which uh, legendarily, apocryphally, was created for Shirley Temple way back in, what, the 50s or 40s, whenever she was famous and one of the early movie stars, because she was too young to drink. And all they did was pour some grenadine and ginger ale in a glass, and it made it look like a cocktail. Now, the dirty Shirley is starting to trend up which is really just grenadine alcohol and ginger ale or uh lemon lime soda i.e sprite in a glass which if you think about it is just a highball so all the stuff that we've had highballs tom collins whiskey highball anything that is just you know one part alcohol to about four parts carbonated beverage you can call that a dirty shirley and people will think you're very hip so get ready this summer <laughs> you're, you're about gonna to see, get super hip yeah you're about <laughs> to get really hip and you're about to see bars charge twice as much for what used to be a highball and now they're calling it a dirty shirley uh, but you heard it here first folks yes and we can show you how to make your own. Yes, because they're very, very easy to make. Yeah. That's kind of why I'm spending a lot of time, because I'm going to make two of them. They're so freaking fast to make. So, yeah, go ahead and <laughs> knock them out. Hi, yeah. everyone. I just want to say hi to our friends. Yes, yeah, so oh, we had all uh, these things come in. Yeah. Hi, Erica, Yolanda, Lynn, Georgetta, David, Garen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you all. <laughs> Yolanda says, ready to, to get super hip. Super hip. <laughs> Yolanda, I'm making all of you guys the coolest people. Yes, you're going to be the cool kids in school. You're just going to be the, the, like the life of the party. Does this mean some the, like I'm not going to have to eat lunch alone at the cafeteria? Basically. No, nah, I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> all right, so what we'll do is as it starts with all highballs, we're going to fill a highball glass with ice. You don't even need to shake, right? Don't need to do anything. Wow. With this. And it's then like here. basically like makes itself. It does. Like this yeah. is this is you know a, a made cocktail. You make it in the glass. They arrange that in the center. Mm -hmm. And we are just gonna take, oh, this is a new bottle. One of the few bottles that we always keep a backup of uh Awayuki gin, that white strawberry flavored gin, which is spectacular. <laughs> So we are just going to take. It is strawberry season as well, so that's why I've been challenging Dan to make all the cocktails that we have coming up some way <laughs> strawberry. It's just been <laughs> strawberry after strawberry. In case you guys don't know, I love strawberries. So there you have it. There's going to be lots of strawberry stuff coming up. <laughs> Ridiculous. Then we're just going to add, we add an ounce of half of that. We're going to do a half an ounce of Luxardo. And just to make it Shirley Temple-like and extra strawberry, we are going to take strawberry syrup. Now you can make your own strawberry syrup. You guys know that I like 
this if you've watched the show at all. I love this uh, this French frosé strawberry syrup. I showed up. Yeah, over here. You can find that at a lot of uh, uh, French yeah, we found it places. at Marcel. I think is that Mar that's the name of the shop, I believe. Yeah, I believe it's it's called Marcel. It's a French shop in Bishop Arts in Dallas. Um, it's they have a lot of like really fun French products, so um, you'll definitely find it there. Um, but also online as well. Yeah, you can find it online. Uh, I don't know if they sell it at places like Whole Foods. Probably. <laughs> Probably. I've never looked. So we're going to add just a little more ice. Oh, Yolanda's asking if it's strawberry flavored. How come it has no color? I think she's talking about the gin. Oh. That's yeah. a good question. It is. I'm not sure how they do yeah. it. But, uh, Some it, kind of whiskey. Well, I guess it's probably, I guess the Awayuki strawberries are the white colored strawberries on the outside, even if they have kind of a red tint inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so they probably made it clear in order to kind of reflect that white strawberry yes. Esque yeah. the the aesthetic. Yeah, I don't know, but also it's probably infused and then distilled. Mm -hmm. So I imagine they make the original mash with some of the strawberries. So then, when the distillation process, it would leave all that color out. So if you do see like a strawberry flavored uh, alcohol and it is strawberry colored, that sounds wrong. That's probably <laughs> actually artificial because it's, because if you do make a liquor with strawberry and then distill it. The, none of that color is going to be there anymore. Otherwise, yeah, yeah you know, vodka That's would true, be the color yeah. of grain. Or potatoes. Or potatoes. Yeah, vodka would be the color of potatoes. <laughs> but Interesting. Pure yeah. speculation here. I will look into that. You want to get back to you. David says invisible gin. Invisible gin, <laughs> if only. <laughs> oh, but it's so delicious. And it smells like, if you're a fan of strawberries, it just smells like you're out in a strawberry field. It's without a doubt my favorite gin of all time. Yeah, which one did I use? I used the red one. Red, yeah. Gotta use the red the one. Umbrella. So I'm gonna take this guy and just work it open a little bit before I stick the. See, it already looks in. like a watercolor. It's like more saturated here. It's like a, a watercolor technique called ombre or a ombre. gradient. A gradient of stuff. Yeah. Yes. So now I'm gonna take. Here. There's fancy Luxardo cherries and just not be as cool as I think I am. There we go. Got it on the second try. <laughs> so just jab that in there. Finish propping that guy up. We probably need a straw. And oh yeah, I use this. Yeah. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I use this as a technique where I just jam the uh, strawberry or jam a cherry at the end of the uh, little umbrella, and it helps kind of keep it weighted down. And you add a straw. Now here's one thing. So Volta made the image of it like this. Okay, keep that in your mind. Yeah. Because you have to stir these up before uh -huh. you drink them. Okay, yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bunch of syrup and liquor if you drink it through a straw. Yeah. And if you drink it from the top, <laughs> You're, it's just going to be a bunch of club soda or lemon lime soda or whatever. So basically, when you when you serve it, you show it like this, and then yes. like stir it up. Yeah, and then yeah, you, and you need to do like an up and down motion oh, up and down. like this, so that mm -hmm. it creates that kind of yeah. turbulence. And it'll still be a little ombresque, ombresque. Uh, turbulence in a cocktail. Yeah, I love it. Turbulence. All right, I'm gonna try this. Underrated bowling for soup song. Ooh, mm. that's good. That's good. That's very good. Yeah, it's strawberry syrup and strawberry gin. And... <laughs> mm. Mm. Maybe the background jazz. Oh, that is me being cool. Yes, <laughs> yeah. David, it is. It is the background <laughs> jazz. That's it. Oh, thank you, David. He look. He says I'm cool. Yeah, you are cool. David says I'm cool. I'm cool. So it's a very like very uh, refreshing beverage. Um, mm, that is good. Definitely strawberry forward, um, and it looks fun. It's like if you have one of these little umbrellas, you can pretend you're at the beach. Um, yeah. If if you're not going to the beach anytime soon. And you'll notice I use diet sprite or sprite zero 
which is a nice way to save calories because mm -hmm. those things really taste the same. Do you typically use Sprite in these or is it ginger ale? So uh, a Shirley Temple can either be, as they say in the original recipe, lemon lime soda or ginger ale. Oh, okay. So it can be either one, and that's really just like Sprite or Seagram's. Mm -hmm. uh, however, both, uh, both ginger ale and Sprite, the diet versions of them, the zero calorie versions, taste almost identical. Uh, especially the, the like Sprite Zero, or I think there's a Seagram Zero, mm -hmm. the ones that are made with uh, with uh, erythritol or monk fruit or something like that, mm -hmm. that not uh, aspartamine. So the ones that don't contain like uh, the NutraSweet, sweet and low type of stuff, the ones that contain other sweeteners, mm -hmm. they taste virtually identical. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, like, in my opinion, there's no reason to add another hundred calories to a cocktail that already has a hundred plus. That's true. Yeah. Why not? But that's why you make them yourself. <laughs> not because I'm cheap, which I am, <laughs> but also because I know how many calories and I know what I'm putting in the cocktail. Yeah. All right. So let me get down off my soapbox yet again, uh, and we're going to make one that is much, much, much more complicated, but also just as easy to make. So once again, we are going to... How can it be complicated and easy at the same time? Number of ingredients. Mm. That's all. Okay. And I know tequila fans going to be upset with me for using an Añejo tequila in a cocktail. I'm sorry. It just tastes too good. I'm only using a little. I promise. I promise. This is like a yeah. like a, like a penicillin mm -hmm. that uses a, that uses a single malt Isla Scotch. Mm -hmm. On the and it's still in the cocktail. Not, yes, not, not, not the, the actual medicine. medicine. <laughs> no. So I'm going to use a ounce of Añejo. You could use Reposado, but anything that has some age to it. You want a little bit of that oaky flavor because that pairs really nicely with uh, ginger ale. We're using ginger ale in this variation. Uh, and then I'm going to take a uh, half an ounce. And this is kind of like the tequila and orange pairing that you get in a margarita. So we're going to use a uh, an orange liqueur. In this case, I'm using a Maro Nonino just because I have it and I love it. Uh, but if people don't? If you don't, uh, Grand Marnier, okay. uh, Orange Curacao, yeah. any of those guys are fine. I just like this. Is it, is it hard to find? Is a Maranino hard to find? It's not because during the cocktail renaissance that happened in 2019 and, of course, during 2020 when everybody was making cocktails at home, uh, one of the, the, the catalysts of that renaissance was paper plane. Uh, the uh -huh. paper plane cocktail was uh, whiskey, Amaro Mar Nonino, and lemon juice. Mm -hmm. So this is much easier to find, if not the easiest to find of the Amaros. Okay. It's pretty much this Inferno Branca mm -hmm. that you can find all over the place. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use a, uh, Volta does not like Inferno Branca. It <laughs> gives me a uh, <laughs> shivers. What? It has a very medicinal taste. But you don't like drinking mint medicine? It's like, it's like a minty Ricola. <laughs> yeah. In a good way? Yeah, it's like, it's an acquired taste, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and then being the that that was a half ounce of Amaro Nonino, mm. and then since it is a Shirley Temple, I need to add some color to this thing. Mm. So I'm going to add a little bit of pomegranate juice, quarter of an ounce, and a quarter ounce of our agave syrup too, because well, it's kind of a riff off of margarita as well. Last but not least, I'm going to add a half ounce of grapefruit. Not really sure. It's just because I have grapefruit juice and it's good. It's kind of a proxy between lime and lemon. And it can kind of work in a pinch as a replacement yeah. to, oops, I did a full ounce of that one. There we go. As a replacement for like that lemon lime mixture that you use in a margarita. And you know what? That is plenty of ice, so I am just going to stir so that up. Basically, it's not a Shirley Temple. <laughs> it's a dirty Shirley, which is anything I want it to be. Because yeah. it is a highball. <laughs> yeah. 
And I want more color. It's not color. even a highball because the glasses. I ran out of highball okay, glasses. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to add some more pomegranate, not for flavor or anything, it but just... because I want it to be color more yeah. colorful. <laughs> okay, we do whatever we want to do. Yeah, it's... It's your cocktail. Yeah. Have fun with it. Yeah. All right, there we go. Okay, that gives a little more gradient. And then we're going to add in the can of ginger ale. I was looking for a two-liter bottle. I had a can. I'm going to pour that in on top. Now I'm going to take one of these limes that I have laying around. I forgot to wash, so being sanitary, folks. Wash your limes. Wash your limes. And we're just going to cut out a little wedge. And this is another way to make sure that that cute little tropical umbrella you have doesn't fly off. Mm -hmm. Which one Here, do I you use? Do you want another one? You want to use this one? It's not going to be aesthetically pleasing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not going to be the right color because we want to use green for the lime, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got to match. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you just take that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aesthetics. Aesthetics. And I'm not jamming my finger. Don't worry. I'm using it just to balance and bam, right through the middle. <laughs> Twist, 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 twist. Mm. Mm, there we go. Boom. All right. That gives us a nice little boat in which our... Oh, and I just pulled it out. Okay. It went through again. There's a nice little boat in which we can float our umbrella. Boat. Float your boat. Pull, pull, pull. Appreciate your tropical bartenders who have to do this a billion times a day. Those poor folks at the beach. <laughs> I feel for them. I think there's just some bar back that just opens up these umbrellas all the all day. Yeah. Whoever designed this nonsense. But they're so fun. They are fun. Super festive. All right, and there you go. Then you just whoop, get under there. There it is. It acts as an anchor. Looks and oh, functions nice. as well. Yeah. And there you have it. This one probably doesn't need to be stirred as much since it's yeah. not as concentrated, but not as much uh, ginger ale on top. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, that is nowhere close. I thought when I was making it, it would be strong. It's not. It's really good. Oh, yeah. That's really nice. It's not as sweet as this one. Yeah. And the tequila, so... The tequila is nice. Yeah. Having a... As, as crazy as it seems, having a good aged tequila in this cocktail just elevates it a ton it is yeah. it is worth that one ounce of tequila i know don't hate me and yes it is worth it 100 percent. but all right so that was the dirty shirley double feature thank you lynn she said it was a good job Aww. and now volta is going to paint the one that she wanted to paint which is the prettier of the two yeah And if anybody has any questions about all this stuff, just let me know, and I will happily ramble on incessantly. Can you add me to the stream? You always ask me to do this. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, adding to stream. There you go. Now I've got three pictures. Well, you need to remove one of them. I, I get that. Okay, well, let's see. Let's get rid of you. And that isn't how I do it. Okay, this one, remove from stream, and then switch to this guy. Whoops, reverse. Hey, I'm figuring right. this out. Look at me. And now, yes, David says paint. Paint, let us paint. Paint. Uh, can you bring the mic just a little closer? Thank you. There you go, madam. All right. So... Uh, we're going to be painting the highball, the first cocktail that Dan made. Um, I really the like strawberry Shirley, the strawberry yes. Shirley. Yes. Um, I thought it was like, it would be a lot more fun to do, like use some reds and like, let them do the water, like let it do the watercolor thing. So, uh, <laughs> the watercolor thing, the watercolor oh, thing. um, so I'm going to get started with, um, doing sketching two parallel lines. Like this. 
This is going to be one of those like very simple glasses. And then at the bottom, I'm going to do a curved line that connects these two. And then another one right on top, kind of parallel to it. We should make a, a watercolor happy hour bingo. And one of them should be both that says two parallel lines. Two <laughs> yes. Watercolor happy hour bingo. I love it. Yeah. All right. So we got the two parallel lines. Um, and then at the top, so usually, you know, you could add, make the lines kind of um, have the curve pointing downwards. In this case, the curve is pointing upwards, so switching it up a bit. And that only means that, you know, when I, the reference photo that I took, I was kind of looking at the glass from like a slightly different angle. Um, so just kind of like, you know, just a little bit of a difference here in this slight, very slight curve at the top. Well, the, I have to, what? I have to interrupt you in that the chat is, is very excited that I got the screen switching right the first time. Oh, apparently I've had so much trouble with it that everybody <laughs> now thinks I'm, is, is impressed by my, uh, my IT capabilities. Oh, well, I'm also impressed. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> uh, all right. So next I'm going to be sketching out the umbrella and that's going to start with a little line that's going to go kind of through this, this area. And then at the bottom, we're going to have a circle shape for the maraschino cherry. <laughs> Yes, that's a, uh, that's the... Maraschino. No, Maraschino. Maraschino. You said it correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, okay. the, the, the Luxardo fancy Italian variation of it. We had yeah. a whole... Yeah. You know, if anybody wants to learn more about Maraschino <laughs> cherries, please let me know. Yes, please let Dan know. I will talk about those. <laughs> so we've got a Erica Sandstrom. Sandstrom? Sandstrom. Green screen gal says, thank you for the ideas. Oh, thank you for joining all right, so for the umbrella, I'm doing two little, um, not little, I mean, they're essentially it's like I'm sketching out a triangle shape. Uh, so I got these lines and then the ones that connect them are just going to be slightly jagged. They could just kind of, you know, give the impression that there's like those little edges on the umbrella. Uh, and then I'm just going to add another line kind of underneath so you can have the impression that you can like see under like on the other side of the umbrella. And the little little thing at the top for the the stem, I guess the stick. And that's stick. that's it for the sketching part. Like we'll do everything else with watercolor. So I'm just kind of erasing a few of these extra lines. All right, that looks that looks good enough. Um, I'll be using this water brush pen today. Um, to get started, I will be using the wet on wet technique. So I'm going to add a few droplets of water right kind of towards the bottom portion of the glass. And I'm just kind of painting, spreading it out. And you'll notice that the, the paper is glistening just a little bit. Uh, and we just kind of want to keep it in this area for now. Is the lead in the pencil prevent the water from spreading or are you just no. that accurate? No, I'm just accurate. Wow. <laughs> so I'm going to load up my brush with some red from my palette. Now, now the fun part, I'm just going to drop in. This is where the fun begins. Yeah. So you'll see that because we added a layer of water, the color spreading into this area, but it's staying within just within this, this space. So it's not kind of going over any other area because that's where I wanted it to go. Um, so now I'm gonna- well, that's, that's where you put the water. Yeah, that's where I put it, the water, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I, I clean, I'm gonna clean off my brush. Now I'm just gonna kind of soften, just gently kind of add a little bit more water on the edge of this shape so that it continues to spread, but just like very, ever, ever so lightly. Because I, I want, like, before we stirred out the drink, you saw that it was very concentrated at the bottom. So feel free to kind of add more color here so that it's more, like, saturated and then a little bit lighter towards the top. All 
Right. Let's see, David's asking, is that for blending, water-based? Water-based. Like, uh -huh. oh, I guess the, the water, water base, I think is probably what it is. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so when you add a layer of, of water first, uh, it just helps the watercolor pigment to travel freely, um, which sometimes like, you know, it does mean that you have a little bit less control over this area, but at the same time, it just gives you that really fun, like watercolory effect. Yeah, but in, and in a way, it kind of gives you more control because if you did screw up and overwater a portion, you could just wipe the water up. That's true. Yeah, you can use a paper towel or a tissue paper and like gently um, tap the surface, and it will absorb the excess water or even some of the color as well. Excellent point. I, I just I just noticed you're so used to doing these workshops through through a phone camera. You're talking to the phone when the microphone's um. over here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, for the maraschino cherry, it was kind of like the cherry itself is kind of of a dark, uh, dark purple color. So I'm going to grab some purple and mix it, mix it with just a little bit of red just so that it's not um, it's, so that it's a warmer purple, but it's still going to look very dark. And I'm just going to paint this. Now I'm going to clean off my brush and I do want to lift off a little bit of a highlight on this shape on the left hand side because my light source is coming from this direction. And I do want to make this chair a little bit darker here on the opposite side of the highlight. So I'm just dropping in more color. All right. And now for the really fun part. Okay, this is going to be so fun, you guys. <laughs> um, I like sometimes some, sometimes your highlight w could disappear because you know this area is still wet, so it's you know the, dragging the color in. Just you can always go back and kind of reinforce it a little bit. Uh, but the fun part is going in with your brush and just kind of adding kind of painting you know because there's like a little bit of uh water on the bristles it's not dripping but it is definitely you know has water so i'm gonna just kind of like paint with a little bit of water all all the way around the shape and by doing that it's going to kind of soften the edge and also spread out some of that color which will give it that very kind of um soft and floaty watercolor effect. You can also like spread it out a little bit more. Now this will mean that some of the color from the shape, you know, is gonna bleed out, but you can always add another layer after it's dried to kind of uh, make that shape pop even more. later the professional i would have been so proud of myself for painting that cherry in the lines <laughs> now you're like there are no lines yeah there are no no i thought i thought you know usually i do try to kind of s keep the shapes inside of whatever lines but it's fun when you um kind of let it be playful i think it's um i don't know i just wanted to make it more fun so you can always like soften any of these like harsh edges that you get all right, so I'm gonna let this area dry for now while I work on the umbrella. And the umbrella's also going to be red. So I'm going to paint this shape and I'm painting this on dry paper so that I have more control over this shape. So I would say the general rule, um, or like, a, not rule, but advice I would give is uh, if you have a very small area and you want you want it to be you know legible, <laughs> then make sure you paint on dry paper. Um, in this instance, you know we had more space to kind of play with, so it definitely was you know a lot more fun um, to to add the water first and then let the color in. So I uh, also want to lift off a little bit of a highlight on the left hand side of the umbrella too. 
since you know the light source is hitting this object from this direction and also a little bit off of the glass itself that can be a nice little touch chad is very impressed with your technique oh thank you thank you so much all right so i got my uh umbrella i'm going to use a little bit of this color called yellow okra which is kind of like a beach sandy color or a very warm brown just gonna paint this uh, all right uh, and i do want to add just a tiny bit of red kind of to show the opposite side of the, or the inside part of the umbrella here. And I'm making it just slightly lighter so that it, you can tell that it's like, you, it's the other side. So it's not like blending in together into one solid shape. So the one thing I remember from art class is that things that are closer to you should be darker, mm. which seems so counterintuitive. Yeah. It is. Uh, next, I'm going to grab a little bit of Payne's Gray. So I'm diluting it with a ton of water, so it's going to be very light. Okay. Real quick, we got a yeah. uh, little comment saying, love this happy hour Wednesday idea. And uh, uh, also a, a question of a liftoff, highlight, dry, or wet brush? With for a liftoff, uh, wet brush. So not, not dripping with water, mm -hmm. but um you know enough so there's like just enough of water in there so because it's going to help you remove that oh. that color off of there dry brush, now if it's completely dry it's going to make it harder to lift off mm, that's an excellent question thank you David. yeah thank you so here i'm just using this gray to kind of add just tiny little like shadow lines in the glass portion maybe like outline this top here and uh, just a tiny bit, like a little brush strokes, brush stroke on this side of the glass. So just so that it kind of looks like, you know, again, this side is a little bit darker than the other side. And you can always, you know, drop in more color to kind of punch up the contrast. So like you can really see now this highlight area really stands out like even more so. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to this uh, purple mix. And so this area has already dried for me. So now it's going to be really easy to add the second layer without it like kind of bleeding out into the rest of the shape. So it still looks kind of floaty and watercolory, but it definitely also has that like pop effect. Pops off the page. Also can be on watercolor bingo. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> lift off. That lift up. One. <laughs> like you painted inside the lines of that circle not once but twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll make it even even a little bit more even darker. Oh now it's very dramatic. Oh. So dramatic. To get an inventing error yeah. reference, yeah, there. I did. That's um, so last week. It's so last week. So you see now, you could also play a little bit. You know, if you want to um, come in with your brush and just like soften this edge a little bit more. Again, it'll like pull some of that color. So it's kind of like it's like tickling the paper a little bit, but you're like letting you know this the shape kind of be very flowy and playful uh and then the last thing you could do is uh so grab a little bit more red and um paint these little lines on the umbrella just so that it looks it has those little edges on the umbrella um and there you have it the Strawberry Dirty Shirley Temple. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you forgetting one, what? one last watercolor what? bingo phrase? Which? Cast, cast shadow. Oh, cast shadow. I didn't do it in this oh, example. But I can do it real quick. Yeah, cast shadow. I'm going to use. Uh, oh, wait, one more of the watercolor bingo. Hmm. What? 
Payne's gray. Payne's gray. Yeah. But a darker value so that it's not like the same um, as this shadow here. So I'm just going to kind of like add a small little line and then off to the side. So right now it looks very rigid, but I want to soften this line right here so that it looks like a more natural shadow where you don't see like the exact edge. And you can also punch it up a little bit more. So drop in more of that Payne's gray or whatever gray that you're using. Oh, wow. Actually, that transformed it even more so. Yeah, just, awesome. I just bet it's like dropping paint into water. And yeah. Watching it spread out. Yeah, it's so fun. Guys, you got to try watercolors. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, boy. Everyone's, everyone's <laughs> happy about uh, the... the that you as a, as a teacher of watercolor bingo, like everybody's just excited. Oh, right thank now. you so much, everyone. Chat, chat is energized. Oh, chat is energized. Well, thank you all. Thank you all so much. Let me yes. do this. Thank all of you for your comments. Oh, LinkedIn all your user. Energies. Thank you. No. <laughs> thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Um, how is it? Is, that angle nice. cuts off my head. Oh, yeah. Because oh, when it's up and down, it doesn't have the, the thing. There we go. There, there we are. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we hope this inspires you to make one of these. Oh, look at that. It, like the frame. And then here it's like. Oh, wow. It's like, it's like the oh, wow. side like we, It's like we planned this or something. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Sure. A little bit. No. Um, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> But um, this is a really easy, I think this one was very easy, the first one. Yeah, super this easy. one just was ingredients that I had laying around yeah. just to kind of show you that you can make a very easy variation if you've mm -hmm. got a few basic ingredients. In fact, even if you just have strawberry syrup and gin, because yes, gin and strawberries are delicious. Yeah. And then you just pour some freaking Sprite over top of it. <laughs> yeah. And you've got you've got a cocktail. Yeah. Uh, and then you can go from there. What else do you have? I don't know. These are easy. These are inexpensive ingredients. Just mix them together and give it mm -hmm. a try. Teach yourself how to pair those flavors. Yeah. It'll carry you over into cooking too. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. And ah. thank you, everyone. Uh, I like uh, that. I'm psyched. Uh, I'm psyched, too. Erica, I can't wait to see what you create. If you guys do paint any of this or make a cocktail, please, like, tag us or send us a message. We'd love to see it and, like, show you some love. Uh, we're so, so grateful that you're joining us uh, on this live stream. So um, really excited. Next. Okay. I think, <laughs> I think we already kind of hyped this up a little bit. We did take a break, but next week we're doing a caipirinha, a very mm -hmm. special caipirinha, and um, I'm super excited. It's it's gonna be fun to paint and also delicious. Yes. Perfect for summer too. Oh my if gosh. you're in the northern hemisphere. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and it's and it's uh, it's inspired by our friend. Uh, yeah, we'll talk. About well, okay, it. we'll yeah. talk about it later. Yeah. Later. I don't know. You're hyping it up. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. fine. You'll make a post about it. Yeah, so it we'll keep an eye on both <laughs> this social media feed because it's exciting. Yeah. Thank you all, all so right. much. We'll see you next time, next week. Have a good rest of your week. <laughs> Freaking Sprite. Got it. That's <laughs> yeah. a great comment. Yes. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yes, it is a great date night idea. That's mm -hmm. how it started. <laughs>